Okay, so this video is about the making of straight car. That's the car that you can only drive straight. Okay, so there are many aspects to this game. I use 3JS for the graphics. I use Socket.io for multiplayer functionality, for example. If there are two people connected, I can see the other player. And what they do. And try to catch up to them. It's a pretty hard game to play. And I use Canon JS for the physics. And you can see here that the wheels turn, it moves the car forward. The car is affected by the bumps in the landscape and is affected by gravity. Okay, so there are many aspects to creating a simple little game like this. It took me four days to create. There are a lot of techniques that you can apply in many other situations. So I'm going to summarize most of those in the next few minutes of this video. Okay, so we have to start somewhere. File, new file. That's too confusing. I'm going to use a boilerplate for 3JS projects that I've already created. And that's my 3JS boilerplate that I've got on GitHub. It's MIT licensed, so you can use it for free. Okay, so I'm just going to go down. I have several branches with various places that I can start a project from. For example, this one will use stats.js. This one will use datgui, which is this controller here. I don't really need that, but I need stats. I do want to use socket.io, but I've decided to solve that problem at the end of the project. What I want is Canon JS. So I want a basic template that gives me some Canon JS functionality. Okay, so I can install this repository and then check out Canon JS install and run dev. And I've got this basic example that I can begin from. So back up to the top, I need the line, this line here. I'm just on any drive on my computer, git, clone, right click to paste. I want to save it into a folder called straight car. You can name it anything you like, cloning. Okay, CD into straight car, going back down to the instructions, git checkout Canon JS, that's the name of my branch. Okay, switch to new branch, npm install. And then if I just type code dot in this current folder, it's opened up VS Code for me with a project named straight car that I can start editing. And that's the source code here in the source client. Okay, and the actual code that we'll start in the browser is this here. And I discuss all the code that you see in here in my 3JS course here that you can access from this website through various platforms being Udemy, YouTube, Skillshare, or through my book. So I'm not going to show you what every line of code does, but if you did the course, you would have a pretty good understanding of what everything means. And we can see that running in the browser. If I just open up a terminal here in VS Code, if I just write npm run dev, it started up a local server, serving my example on localhost 8080. If I open that, there we go. That's the example running locally on my own computer. And this is all the code that you could experiment with in your own time if you wanted to. But I'm creating a car game and there's no cars in there, but there's objects with physics. That's good. We have a floor that's useful, but I have another shortcut. I've already prepared something. If we look at my 3JS tutorials website again, and if we look at this search here and just type the word in car, I have a little example here called car physics. And this is it. Control a little car, WASD. So this can actually turn and it can be affected by these little bumps in the ground, but it's just a starting template. If I scroll down and ignore this one for now, that's another game I've created. There's this code here, source client, client TS. Just copy that to the clipboard, go into VS Code. All this code here in client TS, select all, delete, control V. I'm pasting in what I just copied from my website. Now here, since Webpack is still running, it's rebuilt that code. I go back into my browser, localhost 8080. That's the example now running from my own computer. And I can drive that little car around. I can even change gravity. Lift it up high and drop it again. There we go. That's the source code for a simple little car demo already. And you can see just very quickly, that's a section of code that is reading for key presses and changing forward velocity and right velocity, plus or minus. There are some constraints about the wheel axes. So each wheel is relative to the main body. I'm just going to refresh that. Okay, so the wheels turn. That makes the car 
body move forward and these front ones I can turn them left and right like that you know to fix it like that so it's all just really simple physics example that you can learn from okay and up here these are the libraries that are already installed that I'm using I'm using Canon ES more specifically and because I've used my Canon JS boilerplate if I look at package JSON the dependencies have already been set up okay so I've got three and Canon ES which are pretty much the most important things to begin with for this particular example another important thing to note about using my Canon JS boilerplate is that you get these two other files Canon debug renderer and Canon utils those are two little files that I use in almost all of my Canon JS examples and they are included in the Canon JS branch anyway so Canon debug renderer when I look at the example it's drawing the green lines the physics world which is highlighted by the green lines there is different than the graphics world the 3JS world physics is a separate calculation and depending on whatever the result of those physics collisions are it is modifying the position of the 3D objects now physics you have to treat as a very simple thing here I'm using spheres for the wheels rather than using cylinders. Spheres are much faster to calculate than cylinders, so that's why I'm doing that. Okay, so in client TS, we can actually turn off that debug renderer. Okay, so I'm declaring and instantiating there, updating it here. So if I just comment that line out, so control is to save, that will recompile. And now I can see just the 3D graphics, but I know that the physics is working. I just don't visualize it anymore. Okay, so when you're creating physics games, it's useful to be able to visualize what the physics world thinks is happening. And I use my Canon debug renderer script for that. There we go, and we can see. Excellent. Now the other script, being the Canon utils there, I have two little helper functions, one for creating a tri-mesh, the other for creating a convex polyhedron. It's quite technical stuff. I don't actually use either of those in my straight car video, so I won't talk about them, but I do have some information about those things on my website, convex tri-meshes, convex polyhedrons, and compound shapes, if you're ever interested, anyway. Now looking back at this, this ground is quite simple. It's just a flat plane with some little bumps on it, which I've used a cone shape for. Comparing that to straight car, the ground is a little more sophisticated. There's lots of bumps and little hills. And that's acting as a proper physics object. I created that in Blender. In Blender, there's a little add-on that you can install called Landscape. You can get that here, Edit Preferences. And just type landscape. There we go. Ant landscape. You can enable that. Okay, so shift A, mesh landscape. And you get this little tool to add different kinds of landscape shapes. So that's what I've done. I've used, well, I can't remember what one it was, but there was quite a lot of options there. And I've changed some subdivisions and etc. because I want it to render quickly in my game because my game is rendering 60 frames a second. And that's what this little tool up here is good for, the stats panel here. It shows me that the model that I've loaded in there is optimized quite a lot so that I'm able to get a 60 frames per second frame rate. So there is a lot of experimenting with this tool to get something good. But anyway, I have created that model that you can use, which leads me back to the website. I actually have a page on straight car here. And in it, I've got a little mini example of the straight car game. It's not really a game with a timer or multiplayer or anything like that or sound effects. But you can still drive the car. It's the same kind of thing. But it has the landscape in it as well. And it uses the physics. If we go down here to source client TS, this is the source code of that demo. So copy that. Go into our existing code, client TS, select all, delete everything, paste, save. You've now got a new set of code, which is this little mini game here, which is also called straight car. And this is the code. But the important thing about this is that it's actually loading assets. So if you were to save that and load it in the browser and look at it, you get a black screen. So if I press F12 to open up developer tools, it shows me there's a lot of 404 errors. It's looking for assets. There's a HDR background image, some terrain, which I've just been talking about. So there's some missing files. So back on my website, down here in the script section, I've got this zip file, extract the straight car assets zip file. We're gonna copy both both the contained image and models folder into our projects dist client folder. So if I just open that file, this is the zip on my left and this is my project on the right. So dist client, just want to copy image and models into there. And now there are the images for the smaller straight car example and the train GLB being the model of the train, but we have all the models right now. 
that I need. Now, when I refresh the browser, it's finding all the assets and it's not reporting any errors. Excellent. Okay. And we can drive. That's the terrain that I've created. Okay. So we can actually import that into Blender, that terrain. So I'm just going to delete everything that there is there. File, import, GLTF. I'm just going to navigate to the location where it's saved. Dist, client, models, terrain, import. Okay. And that's the actual terrain that I'm using in my game. There we go. And you can see that was created using that tool. Landscape there. Excellent. Now, next problem. 3JS doesn't know that it's a physics object as well. And I could have used my scripts here, utils, canon utils, create trimesh or create convex polyhedron to create a physics version of that model. But that model has a lot of vertices in it. So the physics objects created would be quite large and be quite CPU intensive to continually calculate 60 frames a second. So what I did is use something else called a height map. And in the example, I'm going to turn on the debug renderer so that we can see that height map that was generated. Okay, so go into client. It's fine where I'm using Canon debug renderer and that's right down the bottom here in the animation loop. Here it is, Canon debug renderer update. Control S to save. Okay, going back into the browser, we can actually see the physics representation of the ground. You can see that I'm only using some portion of the ground as a physics object, not using the portion over there. So I've generated the height map to be like that. So only really use the section of the ground that I'll be driving over. So all the objects in this game are locked to a single axis. So the car, the balls, the log won't go left and right. So I could actually get away with creating quite a small physics object, which is not so hard for the game to continually test against. Whereas if I created the whole ground as a physics object, it'd be doing a lot of work just recalculating all the collisions that it needed to recalculate every frame as it's going along. So to find that section of code where I load the terrain, terrain.glb, there I go. I'm loading the terrain. Once it's loaded, I'm creating a ray caster, which is a little tool you get in 3JS, where you can create a vector to find out where a collision may be. And I'm creating a ray caster all across the whole terrain, pointing down, telling me the height of the terrain at any point, and then creating another little object, which I'm using as the height map. And that's this section of code here, creating a terrain body and adding it to the physics world. Quite technical, but I had to do this manually. And usually when you're doing physics programs, you're always writing a bespoke solution specific for the purpose. Anyway, you can read that in your own time. But let's just say I did comment that out and we can see what happens. Now, the car just falls straight for the ground, F5. Okay, the car falls. So that section of code there is calculating the terrain. And we can see. And that's a pretty optimized solution. Also, you've heard me say it several times that straight car can only drive straight. So I'm going to make it so the car is no longer locked to the single axis. And that's here in the cars update method. If I just scroll down here, we go frame body. I'm canceling out the forces on its actual frame body and all its wheels, the X axis, and also just forcing the positions to be zero for the center and the wheels are sort of offset one or minus one on the x-axis so if i just comment that out now the car will veer left and right depending on whatever it collides with or whether the wheels slip on the surface okay so looking at that as i drive along the car is going to slightly go one way or the other i'm not sure which way yet there we go there we go and eventually there's no height map there so it's just going to go straight through Okay, so undo that, save. Okay, so that's a lot of information so far and this video is 15 minutes long and I barely touched the surface. I wrote this game quite quickly because I already had a lot of the skills and the tools already developed over the years, but the source code for the actual game that I demonstrated at the beginning is here. You can git clone that URL and the project's very similar, but it's set up more as a bunch of separate files with different other objects, chicken, duck, mushroom, example, and unicorn. And it's also set up with Socket.io. There we go. It's got a Socket.io server. And the instructions to install that are down here. Okay, clone the repository CD. You need to install TypeScript, npm install, npm run dev. And then you can open the browser and view it locally. And this is the game. <laughs> 
it's very complicated. I hardly ever finish it. Let's see if you can beat those scores. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share. And to help support me to continue to make free stuff, check out my book and courses. Thanks. It's working.